Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube. Today, unboxing, building and reviewing the Tiger 1E 4D models 172nd in the 3D puzzle style. Part of a collection of six tanks manufactured in China. In the Girls and Panzer scheme, for those who aren't sure, an animation about World War II tanks. We have already built a few of these on the channel and we'll review the rest. You've already got the bulk of the idea that they're thickly cast parts from recycled plastic, around 30 parts in total with basic sprue nubs, flash marks and sink sections. The instruction numbers are on the parts but instructions themselves are quite tiny and a bit tedious to sort the parts and initially Put together a bit of a process of cleaning up each component they're pre-colored and painted making them look like a cheapened kids toy they're after a bit of attention especially scraping drilling barrels cleaning up filling seam lines and a coat of paint they do honestly polish up nicely to a proper scale model and can be deployed in all sorts of purposes from dioramas, standalone kits or even ideal for wargaming where they're quite heavy and sturdy and would not break as easily as a styrene kit. This plastic does respond well enough to plastic cement though the other ones I've used as super glue for some reason. The snap fit is quite tight and all honesty you would not need to use glue if you're not too fussed. I do fear that the seams may split or shift later on after I have applied paint. If finish is not a big deal or you're utilizing as a toy or for a kid to build, you could probably finish it anywhere between 15 minutes to half an hour casually. Taking it quite seriously and doing a proper clean up, the whole build stage is less than two hours. A very quick turnaround for a short amount of entertainment. I do honestly feel these models are slightly too big, but we shall measure it and compare stats later on to Google. Though their proportions and detail is fairly pretty good and stands with my other scale model kits from Retrobull main brands. There is standard articulation in the gun barrel and the traversion of the turret. I am a massive fan where most time is soaked up in assembly of wheels, suspension and whatnot that the wheels are all molded in one place, though this could be a bit uh, boring and shallow for some hobbyists. The rubber tracks are not so desirable, though it looks a lot better than other 4D offerings which utilize the exact same hull regardless of scale, error and style of tank. This line is also the most expensive of the 4D line of 72nd tanks, I would imagine by the density of the material, larger parts count and heavier weight volume to ship out. Still leagues and far cheaper than anything else by the other major brands in traditional hobby shops. This line also shares an issue I feel when building a lot of Wargaming miniatures or Bandai line of Gundam model kits that the base of this model is the same across all six tanks and I'm getting a bit bored of building the hull and just adding additional detail on top. It's uh, getting very repetitive. Maybe purchase one or two. The same technique when 3D printing tanks, I found the width of a tiger on Google and entered it in scale model conversion calculator and utilizing calipers found all the dimensions to be uh, pretty close so this is an accurate rendition of historical examples in museums and specs. Any feeling of scaling issues can be set aside though I do have a large number of 76 and inaccurate older and vintage modelers which I'm probably more used to utilizing those. After a couple of issues have been resolved, some seams filled and sanded, the entire project was coated via airbrush, 0.5mm nozzle low PSI with a homebrew mix of automotive filler primer straight onto the plastic to look for errors. It was fairly ideal and we jumped straight to airbrush painting 
utilizing Mr. Hobby color lacquer based earth and sand tones with highlights of yellow to brighten it up and make it a bit more cartoony for the source material. It was pre-shaded with intention of doing some chipping and coated in hairspray but this model was abandoned for so long that was not feasible anymore. The intent was to finish this model first as the first part of the review of this line of six tanks. Smaller details are hand painted also in lacquers, mostly the real rim of the wheel, the tracks, the machine gun and stowage. I have collected a number of aftermarket Girls and Panzer decals, some some kits and others I've printed myself and found the appropriate scales and size ones to fit on this tank. The numbers were hand painted on and heavy weathering was done with dry brushing, weathering pencil, weathering pigment, sludge washers, pin washers, all sealed with a flat clear boosted up with a flat base for a very dead flat finish. The ordering of the weathering went with what method would apply best to what overall finish. The model was coated in a gloss clear first ideal for sealing decals and washers. A matte coat applied the rough cut from Mr. Color for all of the weathering pencil and pigments to be added. It captured it quite nicely and the smooth version of the flat clear applied last to seal it in. Complete game changer. To my painting and weathering styles and methods. Being a cheaper model I wasn't a hundred percent committed and initially went through the motions and started getting a bit more experimental and reckless. Other parts just practicing, filming and modeling techniques that I don't do too often like scraping barrels, drilling and all that. And overall once we got heavily into the weathering part of the finish I started to have more fun and experimental where i would be a bit more cautious on a model I took quite seriously and it somehow turned out pretty well and pretty pleased by the a finish that is obviously not perfect the pre-shading has worked out with the color palette and modulation on top of that draws the eyes around the model uh, giving it a bit of interest. The decals are intriguing in a bit of a weeb manner. I use the less perfect ones as it also is a cheap build and neaten up the corners where the printing of the decal was misaligned with the same color as the tank and it's reasonably not that visible unless you look for it. And finally as I always say if you use very subtle and light weathering techniques and build it on top of each other constantly in various tones and gradients it will look heavier and heavier and worn. In the end very happy. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time stay tuned for further content check out the description section for references and all of my social media links across Instagram, Facebook and whatnot. You'll see more content there in work in progresses and any form of promotions. And we'll catch you guys next time. See you later.